Hello everyone, it's Carrie, and today's video is a face-up video where I'm working on an Ever After High doll and making it into Billie Jean from the 80s movie The Legend of Billie Jean, played by Helen Slater. So if you're an 80s kid, you may remember this movie. i had been wanting to work on this character for a really long time. I really loved the movie when I was a kid. And this is um, this doll was made for a recent convention. If you're interested in pur purchasing her, she is still available at the time I'm recording this video. And I'll put the link to that in the description box below. She's in my Etsy shop. And I believe at the time, yes, at the time that this video will be posted, there is a big sale in my Etsy shop from the convention dolls. Uh, some of them are up to 40% off, so check that out. Uh, like I said, the link will be in the description box below. So I rooted her with some soft alpaca yarn uh, in ivory, and I later gave her a very edgy short hairstyle like the character did it's one of the if you're not familiar with the movie there's just an iconic scene where she cuts her hair really short and just becomes you know really tough and powerful <laughs> so um so i did that with the hair um, fortunately i was working on these for the convention like i said and i was just in a real hurry to get a lot of these done so i so instead of cutting quarters with the actual dolls, what I do is I just don't take time to set up my camera and record them. So some of them, it's just the face up. And this is one of those. So I gave her the usual four or five coats of Mr. Super Clear. And or to, to begin with, usually four coats. And then I always start shaping my eyes with white. And then I start in with the line work, the black on the upper eyelid, and then using some fine lines around the tear duct and water line. So my favorite pencils to do, do these very tiny lines on the um, eyelashes and the uh, waterline and tear duct and and these really tiny areas are the Faber Castell art grip I've talked about them several times before they're just really good for small lines because it's the pencil I've, I've tried a gazillion over the years a bunch of different brands and it's well it's not my favorite to do the rest of the face up it is my favorite for the lines to use the Faber Castell art grip because they uh, keep a very sharp point and so it's a harder core than a lot of other pencils and it actually goes on really well so just I use um, I think it's Van Dyke brown and black and I usually just order those open stock directly from Faber-Castell so the supplies that I use are in the description box below along with affiliate links so if you do make purchases through those affiliate links even if it's not the product that you clicked on I do get a very small uh, commission from or percentage of that purchase I'm often asked about the brushes that I use so this brush in particular is a very small round brush I get like the tiniest I'd tell you the number of the brush but different brands have different numbers so there isn't just like a consistent size across different brands of, of paint brushes and I use a wide variety of paint brushes so the round brush is like the classic watercolor brush look if, if you're not familiar with what uh, round brushes are but um, it's just a, a classic like water color brush and it's very small and then I'll um, after the brush gets kind of old and tattered if I don't take care of it I'll cut it super short so it's kind of like a stencil brush and that's what I'm using in these smaller areas it works really well kind of like as a very teeny tiny blush brush or something once you cut it down like that so I, I have a few of those that I use in the small areas So I usually use that for lipstick and maybe shading around the nose and the eyes. And then I like to use these tiny angular brushes to do smaller detailed 
brushing or shading and blushing around like the the nose and under eye and eyelid area so those are two of my main brushes that I use very tiny angular brushes and very tiny round brushes so I'm giving her some highlight I use exclusively almost exclusively pan pastels but I believe in this particular doll I pulled out some of my older pastels that I don't usually use on dolls but I needed some different kind of colors so I used some kind of vintage pastels that I used like in high school and college there I'm pulling out that art grip again for the lines in the eyelid I've really really enjoyed this face up and there it is the earth tones um, I don't even think I caught the brand but I don't even know if this brand is available but I have a couple of different sets of series of pastels that are professional pastels but some of them are discontinued because they're older but they still work fine so I use this particular brown for the eyebrows Oh, so what I was going to say is I'm particularly fond of how this face-up turned out. It's uh, actually one of my favorite face-ups that I've done recently. Looks a little similar to the character's face, uh, but like I said in, in the past, I don't always try to look make them look exactly like the character, especially because of the mold that I'm using isn't going to be the same shape as the character's head. So I just kind of try to give a little get a little bit of the characteristics of the character I'm working on. I'm, I'm not too worried about making it look exactly like the person. It's just my style, I suppose. I do admire some of those other artists who actually sculpt the head into the shape of the character that they're painting and then they can paint it to look just like that but then it's not really my particular type of doll I like the dolls that are a little more surreal looking so I'm going in with some white uh, Derwent watercolor pencils and giving her highlight under her brow line and now I'm going in the very last thing I do I kind of procrastinate before I start in the, in the color of the iris because I feel like it's the most difficult to get two perfectly round symmetrical circles <laughs> So I laid in a light blue color and then I blend it out with this Derwent watercolor in white. All of my pencils are watercolor. I'm familiar with some other artists who use other types of pencils other than watercolor, but I always use watercolor. So I'm using some darker shades of blue around the iris and there I believe I was using a, a small exacto knife to get rid of some of the dust or the sometimes if you draw over a small area as long as you have sealed the area underneath like I give a couple of coats of Mr. Super Clear in between to kind of save my work. Um, but sometimes it works better just to move very remove very tiny marks if you use gently use an exacto knife to lift it back up and that way you don't have to erase more so much of your work you can just kind of pick back up that pigment and that's what i was doing there so just keep blending out the eyes at this point I'm not sealing in between I'm just I usually have I've gotten down to the point that I seal at the beginning and then in the middle after I've done like the first layer of everything and then a final few layers 
So I just do a lot of blending with the color in the eye and build up that color and then I and this one I'm trying to keep the a, a, a bigger part of the center lighter so you can see more of the little details and it creates a neat effect. Doing those little lines and details in a very dark like navy blue and then outlining it a bit more with with one of my art grip just to clean it up. So here I'm doing the pupil and I'm just working to not make it just a black dot. Some of them I like that and then some of them I like to just make it a little bit of an illusion of a, a hint at a pupil. Then I was trying to make the pupil a little bit smaller. If uh, The different sizes of pupils do help with expressions so if you're trying to make the expression look more serious or determined like I wanted this one to look tough and strong and determined so I was trying to keep the pupil a little bit smaller than I normally do if I made it larger it would make it more uh, innocent looking so I use larger pupils when I want it to look sweet and innocent and smaller when I want it to look like determined or angry or something like that so I'm using the Faber-Castell Art Grip again for the eyelashes. If you're a supporter over on Patreon, the July uh, I do a I do a uh, walkthrough or step-by-step -step close up video of different features and different things that they they request and this month's will be the lip walkthrough, so how I draw lips, shade lips and things like that. It just be kind of a a walkthrough step-by-step -step of how I build a, a lip color. There's also a the July, I do a game changer each month as well, like a big, uh, either a, a big detailed video or just something like a huge tip that I normally don't share and things like that. And the one for, uh, this is at the $5 tier, uh, to be clear. So the one for July is um, a, a bunch of patterns, downloadable patterns that I for my clothes. So anyway, that's that face up of Billy Jean. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you remember this movie, let me know in the comment section. It'll be fun to talk about. And thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day. Talk to you soon. Bye.